just need to reassemble. What's going on guys, RBG here bringing you another Avengers project video and we are literally on the cusp of E3 2019. Square is holding a big press conference and they've announced that they have some major titles in store for us. So rightfully so, we expected one of those big titles to be the Avengers project. A game that promises to deliver an experience that gamers will enjoy for years to come, but has the most opaque descriptions given. Not that much is known about it, but the well of info is finally starting to leak. In the last video I talked about how Square Enix could possibly be pushing the Avengers project back to 2021 and a lot of you enjoyed it but there were a few of you who didn't like it because I spent 7 minutes talking about FF7 Remake to segue into my main topic. So today I'm going to talk about my expectations regarding Square's E3 presentation and each Avengers gameplay. But before we jump into this topic I want to remind the viewers that this video is sponsored by Beautiful Halo. If you're a man or woman of culture who loves anime games and dank memes then I highly recommend checking out their merch. They have a wide variety of stylish hoodies and other cool apparel that will have your friends mad jealous. By using this promotional link you get 5% off any $49 purchase or higher. So slide on over to beautifulhalo.com, the link will be in the description box below. Now for the past few days I've been doing mental push ups trying to prepare my mind for what's to come with the Avengers project. In the previous video, a leak from a throwaway Reddit account mentioned that the game wouldn't boast a huge roster like Ultimate Alliance 3. That game has an incredibly robust roster with over 30 characters including DLC, but the Avengers project allegedly only features 6 characters. Iron Man, Hulk, Thor, Captain America, Hawkeye, and Black Widow. For those familiar with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you know that these particular characters make up the Avengers main lineup. They've been the central focus of the MCU and it was made more apparent in Infinity War when they were the surviving members of the infamous Snap. Mainstream audiences just recognized them more than they do some of the other Marvel characters. A lot of fans had an issue with this rumor since the roster is tighter compared to UA3 but I think if each character's gameplay is done correctly then it's more than enough. One thing that I don't think we take into account is that the few characters that we do have have all had their own standalone video games and they've kind of proven that they can carry their own in their respective titles if they're given good development. So having all of them in one AAA game is like getting a bonus because there's so much the developers can do with each individual member. Crystal Dynamics already has some of the gaming industry's best talents working on this project and I think each member can contribute things that they've learned from working with their former employers. One of the main members who I think will be a key component is a former ex-employee of Santa Monica Studios, Vincent Napoli. This guy was brought onto the team back in May of last year and it was officially confirmed a few months later in August. He was the lead systems designer on God of War Ascension and the newer entry and was the main character designer and combat designer and level progression designer. His biggest accomplishment was his work on Kratos' Leviathan Axe in the newest game, something that God of War's combat was heavily built on. Whenever I played that game I always wondered what it would be like if Santa Monica Studios worked on a Thor game. The Leviathan Axis combat just screams Mjolnir man. And some of the things Vincent Napoli and the rest of the team managed to do was nothing short of amazing with it. They were actually able to make Kratos' combat style cooler than it already was. So just imagine what Vincent could do if he applied those same gameplay schemes to Thor, a character who has a completely different style to Kratos. His action sequences in the MCU films have shown that he can be one of the most badass heroes. He just hasn't been done justice in the video game department. Specifically, his movie tie-in game titled Thor God of Thunder. A game that was a blatant God of War clone but lacked the budget along with the ambition. Some of the major things this title suffered from were clunky animations and the fact that the development was rushed and it just didn't capture the true essence of Thor. When you're controlling the God of Thunder you should feel like you can pretty much do anything with the power at your fingertips. His gameplay can be so much more than your standard brawler. Since the Avengers project is said to have an open world aspect it would be cool if Thor wielded the ability to launch himself anywhere based on how long you swing his hammer. If there's one game the design team should take pointers from to master Thor's flying it's Lego Marvel superheroes. As kiddie and simple as that game was, TT Fusion absolutely nailed Thor's traversal mechanics among many other things. Unlike Thor's solo game, you feel like you're in direct control of the camera and you can actually fly at will instead of being prompted to in cutscenes. And I think what the new God of War's Leviathan Axe lacked in terms of combat, Vincent Napoli can add to that with Thor's hammer. Like can you just imagine what it would be like having the option to throw your hammer or launch your entire body with the hammer? Freaking insane. 
And then there's the actual Thunder God powers. There's just so much limitless potential. I'm pretty sure that there are going to be other big name devs in Crystal's inner circle who are going to contribute their own creative ideas to Thor too. But Vincent Napoli is definitely going to be one of the main guys working on the God of Thunder's combat. Now the next character that I want to talk about is Captain America. Like he's probably going to be the most balanced and diverse out of all the characters because he can be that powerhouse character and he can be just as agile. So he can hang with characters like Thor and Hulk but still have similar skills to Black Widow and Hawkeye. One thing that I really want to see Crystal do with Cap is inject his gameplay with stealth elements. He's essentially the MCU's version of Solid Snake jacked up on Super Soldier steroids so I think they need to pepper in some of that good espionage. I remember watching Captain America the Winter Soldier and seeing how Cap stealthily infiltrated that shield vessel and thinking to myself how awesome would it be if he was able to do that in a video game. That scene and a bunch of others basically elevated the character of Steve Rogers into popularity. I think he should have a playstyle where he goes full on cloak and dagger, launching his shield off walls and running and performing parkour. You know those type of things that will make him unique. In terms of his other gameplay, I think they should borrow from his solo game Captain America Super Soldier. That's a criminally underrated title and considering the limited time the devs took to work on it, they completely nailed what it feels like to be Cap. It's really the best MCU movie spinoff game Sega produced. I mean yeah, it tries to mimic what the Arkham series did, but the game was incredibly fun as it was ambitious. Crystal Dynamics really needs to borrow some of its features like the slow motion finishers that change depending on the enemy types, and incorporate some of that good old shield gameplay. And there's also the parkour acrobatics I mentioned earlier. All of those mechanics were great, especially considering the fact that next level games only had two years to polish them up. So I'm thinking that the Avengers Project team can really tweak them with better animations and a wider array of moves. I mean that's what makes Marvel Spider-Man PS4 so good, because Insomniac took what the previous games did and made them better. But moving on, the next character I want to talk about is Iron Man. This is a character who hasn't really had the best track record when it comes to solo games. Yeah, he's had some pretty decent entries, but most of those were side-scroller beat-em-ups. We only got our true Iron Man experience with the movie tie-in games, arguably the worst in the MCU video game lineup. The controls were super clunky and you were lucky if you didn't get sick after playing one flying mission. There's just too much going on at once. Now I gotta admit that I can't really blame the Dells for making that game trash because Iron Man is just one of those characters whose physics is too hard to translate into a third person action game. You have to find ways to make it easy to lock onto targets while flying and the camera needs to be able to follow the character at any given moment. Those are things that are going to probably be tough for Crystal Dynamics to master. And I can't even fathom what they're going to do with the combat since Iron Man has been known to incorporate repulsor blasts with his punches. Similar to the comment I made about Thor, I think they should take some of the notes from LEGO Marvel Super Heroes in terms of the flying. That's probably one of the best experiences I've had playing as Iron Man. What I think they'll do is use the developers who worked on the Dead Space games. Those titles seem to feature a lot of technical elements that would bode well with an Iron Man type game. You have the different types of blasters and that in-depth weapon and resource system. And some of the later entries, the main protagonist Isaac was able to fly around freely in outer space. So they could possibly incorporate those flying mechanics into Iron Man, specifically the high velocity space jumps. I'm interested in seeing how you'll be able to fly around the city of New York without bumping into buildings. If I was working for Crystal, I'd take a similar approach to Insomniac Spider-Man. They made it their mission to provide heavy emphasis on momentum, and you can tell that creative liberties were taken to make sure that the fluidity of Spider-Man wouldn't be hindered by simple bumps or miscalculations. So Crystal needs to find a way to make the buildings and contraptions anti-magnetic to avoid slowing Iron Man down. Maybe a feature that allows you to make quick turns would make things easier, or a button that will make you change your trajectory. Besides that, I would love the option of being able to switch from a third person view to a first person view while flying and fighting. And I also wouldn't mind seeing Iron Man's internal helmet HUD since it's been one of his signature trademarks. But moving on, the next Avenger we're going to be making predictions on is the Hulk. This guy has arguably had the best track record when it comes to video games and in 2003 he had a movie tie in that garnered generally positive reviews for its solid graphics and gameplay. It looked pretty good for a game that was basically cashing in on the hype of his movie counterpart. The developers at Radical Entertainment took what they made in that game and expanded on it in 2005's Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction. And this game is absolutely lauded for the things you can do in it. This is something that the Avengers Project really needs to look at because it complements all of Hulk's attributes. 
Now granted, Avengers Project isn't going to feature all of the Incredible Hulk's wacky features. Like I doubt you'll be able to do things like skateboard on top of cars, but I do think you'll be able to chunk an enemy or two. Since the leaks say that this new game will feature non-linear elements that'll make the player decide certain outcomes, I'm expecting there to be certain ramifications if you do things that aren't necessarily considered heroic. I would absolutely love playing as the Hulk and doing whatever it takes not to cause too much collateral damage. Like instances where you will have to choose whether to fight or run to avoid destroying entire city blocks. There's also the gameplay from Bruce Banner's perspective. In previous entries, you'd simply play as him and wait till a certain mission to play as the Hulk. I don't think there's ever been a game that's really showcased what it's like to be a man trying not to snap. How dope would it be just walking around as Bruce Banner and you have to monitor your rage meter? And I think it would be brilliant to implement a cooldown feature where if the Hulk isn't fighting for a certain amount of time, he'll revert back to Bruce Banner. But moving on, the last two I'm going to talk about is Black Widow and Hawkeye. Some of you guys weren't really happy that these members took up the last two slots on the roster. They aren't necessarily larger than life characters or have any major powers compared to the rest of the group, and fans believe that their gameplay is going to be the most cliche out of the bunch. And I honestly think that's totally fine if it's the case. Cliche gameplay can be good if it's done right, and Crystal Dynamics has already shown that they can reinvent the wheel when it comes to common gameplay elements. When I look at the new Tomb Raider games, I instantly think of how well that gameplay could work for characters like Black Widow and Hawkeye. Lara Croft specializes in archery, so that gameplay can be injected into Hawkeye, and there's the shooting mechanics with guns that can be applied to the Black Widow. These can be the foundations for both members, and you still have their other specialties that you can add on. I can go on and on about this, but I think you guys get my point. All we can do now is wait to see what Square shows at this year's E3. It could potentially be another CG trailer or a gameplay trailer, but who knows? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on my channel. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it on social media outlets with your friends and followers. Sharing really makes a difference. But this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.